What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today we're going to go over Bungie's latest weekly update on Destiny 2 and there's some seriously interesting things to cover. But before we get into that guys, if you want to win some epic loot, simply drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below and join my Discord server, linked within the video description. Okay, so let's get into the weekly update and start with this great, great news. The holiday season is near. So you might be compiling your wish list. The PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X are now both out there in the wild and either of them would make a great gift, even if it's one you buy for yourself. We've seen a lot of questions about whether or not Destiny 2 would scale to meet the potential of new hardware. On this festive occasion, the answer is yes. On December 5th, along with the launch of The Curse of Osiris and Season 2, we'll be deploying an update to Destiny 2 that will deliver stunning gameplay with high dynamic range lighting to these new consoles. You'll also see adaptive 4K resolution on the PlayStation 4 and 4K resolution on the Xbox One. If you're migrating to these new consoles or already have, will make it worth your investment. Now before we head further into this actual uh, weekly update, let's go back and see what they actually say here. It's actually quite interesting to recap. You'll see adaptive 4K resolution on the PlayStation 4 Pro and 4K resolution on the Xbox One X. They are blatantly stating here people that you will get true 4K on the Xbox One X while it only be adaptive 4K on the PlayStation 4 Pro. So what does that tell you guys? It's telling me, although the difference would be slight that the Xbox One X will have the best looking Destiny 2 game on any console and that is that. I actually mentioned this in my video earlier when I talked about them confirming uh, there will be an update or support for the Xbox One X when it comes to Destiny 2 and I was right in saying that they would announce it later in the weekly update which they have and I cannot wait now for the 5th of December, I seriously can't. Okay so we're going to move on and starting on November 17th the first clarion call for Destiny 2 will be live all weekend long. This will be an opportunity for you to earn double XP for everything you do with a fellow clan member in your fire team. If you aren't in a clan this will be a perfect time to join one. Your increased gains will run from 10am per Pacific on November 17th to 10 a.m. Pacific on November 20th. If you are dedicated to solo playing, there will be a future Clarion calls that won't require you to play with a clan. So if that interests you people, if you want to earn double XP, write that down in your calendars. Next up, they talk about new changes coming to guided games. And they state, we have several of our superhero engineers working on really important things like network stability across the game, but we hope to continue making progress on guided games as soon as possible. Here are some short term fixes we'll deliver with the release of Curse of Osiris on December 5th. We've added an audio cue so that you know when you found a guide. Full clans can now guide. Added reminders that if you reject a clan, you're still at the front of the line, so you can only pick guides with a mission statement that looks appealing. Guided games will support the new Nightfall and Raid content you'll find in the Curse of Osiris, and you'll learn more about that next week with our first live stream. Interesting, they say new Nightfall and Raid content. I cannot wait to see what that new Raid content is. They're then going to answer a few questions about guided games. Why aren't there checkpoints in guided games? Bungie State, the original goal was to prevent checkpoint farming, where players would start a game with a pickup group and drop right when they've reached the right checkpoints to take to their buddies. But not having checkpoints causes different issues that we're not happy with either. We're still looking at this. We also wanted to make sure every player had the same expectation of where you would be starting. When you go into a guided game, you will always start from the beginning. We've considered breaking up uh, the starting points by checkpoints, but our theory is that if we split up the matchmaking pools on a per checkpoint basis, we would make queue times even longer. It's always a balancing act when putting new players together to play in-game content. Why can't players talk to their clans in game chat? Bungie state, we want it in game too. Getting clan chat into the game is one of our highest priorities and we hope we can get it into our release as soon as possible. And yes, we're interested in a tower zone chat too, but we have to prioritize against all other asks. Will we see improvements to chat functionality? We can do a way better job 
in the game to encourage players to communicate, like making more obvious public team channels and a good time to enter, or letting players know about chat setting defaults when you start the game, or letting you know when someone is trying to whisper you etc. These are the kind of things we have on our backlogs, but again, everything is prioritised against all other asks. What about the emote wheel we just heard about? They state, yes, no one wants this more than me and we're trying our best to make it happen as soon as possible. I've wanted this forever, even without an emote wheel, there's been amazing content pulled out by the Machinima community. I can't wait to see what you'll create once the wheel is out and it's easier to chain your favourite moves together. They then go on to talk about resetting the reset. The DPS team is always looking diligently behind the scenes. They are making sure you have the info you need to have the best Destiny 2 experience. Player support specialists are your tireless advocates behind the scenes in the meetings repeating what you talk about on their forum. This is their report. Curse of Osiris reset changes. With the release of Curse of Osiris, ritual resets will no longer take place at 1am Pacific. Starting November 5th, resets will occur at 1700 UTC. Throughout Destiny 1's lifespan, players would frequently encounter an issue where weekly resets would not always coincide with content releases. This would prevent impacted players from earning new rewards. Countermeasures were taken by disabling activity playlists, but we were unable to prevent every scenario. Additionally, we're seeking to align the milestone resets with event availability, such as Trials of Nine or Iron Banner, to provide a uniform experience for players to follow each week. The following is a short list of time zone conversions from 1700 UTC. If you do not see your local time below, we advise you to use an online time zone converter to prepare for the upcoming change. So 1700 UTC is 9am PST, 12pm EST, 5pm GMT, 9pm MSK, 2am JST, 4am AEDT and 6am NZDT. And they end the weekly update talking about the series of streams that are coming that will give us more info on the Curse of Osiris and Season 2 and even more than that. The first stream is next Wednesday at 11am Pacific time. But yes guys, that is the end of the weekly update and what I believe is worth covering. If you do want to check out it all, you will find it linked within the video description. But quite some interesting things to talk about there, especially the Xbox One X. Having true 4K HDR gameplay of Destiny 2, I cannot wait for that. But guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leaving a like really does help me out. Thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one. in the wrong, knowing where we stand, but you and I will carry on, we never get it right.